Here's my HPA shirt I'm rocking. If any of you want to buy this, it now comes in a black wash that I super love. Uh, I need to buy it. Hex the patriarchy. Best sentiment you could ever put on a t-shirt. Hello, it is Friday, December 7th. I'm Jackson Bird, and this is Vlogmas. So today's Vlogmas is going to be a little bit different because today is the first day of Project for Awesome 2018. If you don't know about Project for Awesome, I'm so happy you're watching this because I love spreading the joy of Project for Awesome to new people. So Project for Awesome was started in 2007, I believe, by John and Hank Green, aka the Vlog Brothers, Crash Course, those dudes who make podcasts and write books and whose videos sometimes play in your science classes. They started Project for Awesome as a day for YouTube to be totally taken over by good vibes, basically. Back in those days, much like today, not everything that you found on YouTube was awesome. Back when it started, there was still a thing where you could go to YouTube and it would show you the top videos of the day, like most viewed, most liked, most commented on, and they usually weren't like great videos. Sometimes they were very inappropriate, sometimes they were copyrighted material. Often they were cat videos, which was fine. So John and Hank decided, hey, let's encourage a lot of people to make videos about their favorite charities, and then we'll go on a live stream for 48 hours and we'll get even more people together watching the videos, liking the videos, commenting on the videos, sharing them around so that for those two days, the whole front page of YouTube is just videos about charities. And it worked. And it has continued working for ten to, um, math, 11 years. Of course, YouTube has changed with the algorithm. There's not really like a top videos page anymore, but that's okay because there's this whole other element to Project for Awesome now, which is a crowdfunding campaign. There's an Indiegogo page that has been open for a few days that you can go check out and donate to right now. While everyone is watching these videos that everyone has made about their favorite charities and you're watching the live stream with John and Hank and a bunch of other cool YouTube creators who come on and do silly things for 48 hours straight. Pro tip, watch the live stream at like 2 a.m. It gets real slap happy. But then yeah, at the end of it all, all of the money that's raised in the Indiegogo then gets distributed to a bunch of different charities. For the first 24 hours, all of the money raised in that first 24 hours, that money is going to be going to Save the Children and Partners in Health. And then for the second half of Project for Awesome, all the money that's raised during that period of time will be split between the top 10 to 20 charities that people vote on. So you vote on them by going to projectforawesome.com and voting for all the videos that are made in honor of that charity. So it's an awesome day to watch the live stream, watch a bunch of videos about great charities that are gonna make you feel good inside and learn new things and learn new causes to support. Important note for context, last year in 2017 that Indiegogo that they run, it raised over two million dollars. So Project for Awesome ain't messing around. Now this year is the first time since 2009 that I am not making the official Harry Potter Alliance video for Project for Awesome. So with that great responsibility lifted from my shoulders, I thought that I would really break from tradition by making a video about the Harry Potter Alliance. I can't help it. Listen, I just got back from Wizarding World in Orlando. I'm all filled up with like the Harry Potter vibes. I just want to keep talking about it. Oh, speaking of, hold on just a second. I got this chocolate frog while I was in Wizarding World and I haven't opened it yet. Oh, I got a little squished in my luggage. Boop. Should we open it and see what card I got? They've got like the trading cards inside, I think. It's actually the first time that I've ever bought one of these chocolate frogs from Wizarding World. Ooh, that's fancy. Look at that. This <laughs> is... Wow, this is a really big chocolate frog. This is like dense. Whoa. I got Dumbledore. I'm kind of excited because that's cool because isn't that the first one that Harry got in the books? But also like kind of wanted a, a deeper cut witcher wizard. Do you think all of them are Dumbledore? Did I totally just get shafted here? If you've gotten one of these official chocolate frogs before, let me know in the comments if you also got Albus Dumbledore. Cool story about these chocolate frogs though, actually. So years ago, I want to say like 2010, uh, a chapter member of the Harry Potter Alliance talked to the executive director at the time and said, hey, I've been doing a lot of research on the cocoa and chocolate industries and learned that a lot of the chocolate that we consume on a day-to-day -day basis is actually made by unpaid laborers. People working in really awful conditions, at times children being forced to work for little to no money in really unsafe conditions. And the chapter member said, you know, those chocolate frogs that Warner Brothers sells to promote the Harry Potter movies, like there's a good chance that they have unethical sourcing in their cocoa. So the Harry Potter Alliance took some time to look into the matter and eventually took it on as a major campaign. For several years, they were in contact with Warner Brothers, trying to determine how ethical the cocoa Warner Brothers was using was, and from there, trying to convince Warner Brothers to switch to more ethical sourcing for their chocolate candies. And this campaign took on 
so many different forms. There was letter writing and petition signing, people made videos, there were public stunts and flash mobs because it was the era of flash mobs starting. The HPA even made their own chocolate frogs. So many different things. And after about four years of really concentrated work, Warner Brothers said that they were officially changing all of their Harry Potter chocolates around the world to be Oots certified, which is a pretty good ethical sourcing standard, certainly much better than what it had been. So now, when you buy one of these chocolate frogs from anywhere, you can look on the back and it says Oots certified, and Harry Potter fans did that. I haven't done the best job explaining this campaign right now, so if you wanna learn more about it, you should watch this video that I made when Warner Brothers told us that they were switching to ethical sourcing. I think it does an amazing amazing job of sort of explaining the Harry Potter alliance and that campaign to you. Now listen, I know not everyone is amped about Harry Potter right now. J.K. Rowling is annoying a lot of people with like new information that she keeps tweeting or her other behavior on Twitter. I personally am, am pretty disappointed that Johnny Depp remains in a title character role for the latest Fantastic Beasts movie, especially in this Me Too era when like this film franchise had so many more opportunities than any other film project that had an outed abuser in it to recast the role. So there are a lot of reasons for Harry Potter to be a problematic fave right now. I get it. But my favorite thing about Harry Potter, far more than the movies or the theme park or like all the extra books in the canon, sometimes even a little bit more than those original books, has always been the amazing community around Harry Potter and the things that people create around it. Fan art, fan fiction, wizard rock, podcasts, sports, conferences, all of that, but also the charitable and activist efforts that fans have done like that of the Harry Potter Alliance. So I told you about the Chocolate Frog campaign, but for those of you who don't know about the Harry Potter Alliance, let me tell you a little bit more about them. So the Harry Potter Alliance is a global nonprofit that uses the power of story as well as popular culture to mobilize fans towards social action. So they use some parallels and like values that you might learn from your favorite stories, as well as the community spirit and intrinsic organizing power and creativity and enthusiasm of fans to direct them towards social action and change within their communities or on a large scale. They've been around for 13 years. They've got over 45 chapters in over 225 nations around the world. Over the years they've been around, they've done amazing things like funding the protection of civilians in Darfur and Burma, uh, registering thousands of first-time voters, donating over 300,000 books around the world, mobilizing around immigration reform and net neutrality and ethical sourcing. Back in the day, used to break records phone banking for marriage equality, and then after that happened, we started running campaigns around transgender safety and awareness. The list goes on and on and on, and if you want to learn more about the work that the HPA has done, you should go check out the other videos that people are likely making for the HPA today at projectforawesome.com, or you can watch the literal hundreds of videos that I made on the HPA's channel. Check out their channel there, or there's a link to some of my favorites in the description box. But today I want to talk about something that I couldn't quite ever say as an employee, which is to be a little bit more blunt about why the Harry Potter Alliance needs your support and needs donations. So the HPA is an educational and leadership development based nonprofit. Even when they're making tangible change like donating books or changing the sourcing of chocolate frogs, their main cause as a nonprofit is to create leaders, to create activists. And that type of longitudinal change isn't the hottest cause to support right now. Like, people right now are giving more than ever to charities in response to the dumpster fire that is our nation. But when something happens in the news that has people outraged, you usually see them knee-jerk donating to places like the ACLU and Planned Parenthood and other major charities that, yes, need donations to survive as they are 501c3s, that is their financial structure, but like, they aren't really struggling for money right now. Small nonprofits, like ones with an annual operating budget of under $500,000, need your donation far more and will be able to do far more with your $10 donation than big nonprofits like the ACLU who have tons of millionaires in their corner and endowments out the wazoo. The little guys need your help and that is what day two of Project for Awesome is all about, helping out the little guys so that they can help out the little guys. Think of them like your friendly neighborhood Spider-Man. Peter Parker's doing some pretty important work locally, like right in my neighborhood, and, and sometimes some really important global intergalactic work too. And he could use a couple of bucks a lot more than, say, Tony Stark, who's also doing a lot of good, could use a couple of bucks. That wasn't the most, like, ironclad metaphor, but I hope you understand where I'm going with this. Small 501c3 charities like the Harry Potter Alliance run a huge risk of going under without continued support from donors. And since they don't usually have the backing of millionaires and foundations, they rely on a lot 
of small donations from people like us and on incredible opportunities like Project for Awesome. Your vote in Project for Awesome in support of the Harry Potter Alliance winning a portion of the money earned this weekend could mean the difference between the HPA continuing to train and inspire hundreds of thousands of fan activists around the globe and having to shut its doors before its story is over. And trust me when I say that there is no other organization like the HPA out there. No one else is gonna replace them if they're gone. The difference I have seen made in people's lives who have been touched by the organization, the changes they've gone on to make in their communities after being a part of the HPA. It's a source of exponential and truly magical change in this world, which I think we can all agree we need a little bit of right now. So please take the time to go to projectforawesome.com and vote for every single one of the Harry Potter Alliance's videos today, tomorrow, and Sunday up until noon Eastern. You get one vote per person per video per day, so there's lots of chances to vote. And please do spread the word. You can learn more about the Harry Potter Alliance on their YouTube channel and their website. Get involved, you won't regret it. And if you can, please make a donation. Even the smallest amount really does help. Though, if you happen to know a millionaire, tell him to email matt at thehpalliance.org. Now, before I go, I do have to plug a couple of other small charities that I'm friends with who I believe will be participating in Project for Awesome this year. So look them up on projectforawesome.com and vote for all of their videos as well. We've got This Star Won't Go Out, which provides financial support to families with children undergoing cancer treatment. Uplift, which is combating sexual abuse in online communities. She's the First, which is working for gender equality through education and provides scholarships for girls to be the first in their families to graduate from high school. Define American, which is shifting the conversation around immigration, identity, and citizenship in a Changing America. Finally, the True Colors Fund, which is working to end homelessness in LGBTQIA youth. So check out all of them, links in the description box. Please go vote for them, get more involved, give them all a donation if you can. And consider that my official list of places to donate to during the holiday season. Thank you all so much for taking the time to watch this video today. We'll be back to regular Vlogmas programming tomorrow. I'll see you then.